Hi, Aria Ba here with a new tutorial on how to approach a painting going from value to color. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you my process and some tricks that help me achieve some good results in a short amount of time. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Now let's start obviously with the base, the value sketch. So everything that I'll show here has been done in Procreate, but keep in mind that all the features I'll be showing are present in pretty much every painting software, like for example Krita, Photoshop or Clip Studio Paint. So for this scene, I had in mind something with a low angle camera pointing upwards. I was looking for a dynamic perspective. Now, I haven't drawn the guidelines for the perspective here, because to be honest, I'm pretty lazy sometimes. Many painting softwares like Procreate or Photoshop have tools to help you with the perspective, but if you aren't very confident on that, I highly suggest you draw your perspective grid before every painting, because it's such a fundamental part. Anyway, I had in mind a scene with a focal point on a character at the top of a mountain, so I ended up with this composition. As you can tell here, there are some elements that help me drive the attention towards the character, like the gate framing him, or the clouds swirling and pointing at him, as well as their stairs that drives my eyes uh, upwards. Now the value sketch sets up the base of my scene. We have a composition, some nice perspectives, some basic light and shadow, and obviously the values themselves. Now that I have everything in my sketch, before going on, I wanted to talk briefly about brushes and I've been frequently asked about these. Now I strongly believe that your results have not much to do with which brushes you use, but more on how to use them. And to prove this point, I can tell you that I pretty much use it only the basic brushes and no fancy ones. Now let me show you the brushes. So the first brush I use is usually the round brush. I've edited some settings here on this one. I basically edited slightly the pressure taper on the brush and the tip, making it thin and pointy. Here's how it looks. This is usually the brush I use for the details. The second one is the flat brush. Here's how it looks, and this is what I use for the base sketch of my value painting, so big areas of colors. So the third and last one I use is in the airbrush and folder, and it's the soft brush. I use this one for big gradients for both color and values, like the sky for example. Now before going on, let me show you how my file is set up right now. I got multiple layers, one for the sky, here it is, and there's one for the clouds. Then I have my mountains in background. Then I have everything in the mid-ground in one layer, this one. My foreground with the trees, and finally my flying leaves. Now let's go and check out how we can add color. So now if I add the layer and start coloring, as you can see, everything gets colored, which can be a little bit uncomfortable. And this is where my subdivision in layers comes in handy. If I go on my mid-ground layer and select it, a new piece of UI appears. If I click here, save and load, I can now save my selection and use it every time I want. Now I have my selection active and I can color without worrying about my edges. I mean, at least some of them. Now, let's see how to place color without losing my values. Let's use a different layer. And this is done in Procreate, but pretty much every painting software has these, which are called layers blending modes. Blending modes are basically different algorithms that shows different results in mixing layers with its background. 
In this case, the one I often use to color on top of values is the color blending mode. I mean, it's not the only one I use, but you should check what results you like best. I often use overlay or soft light as well. Just keep in mind that these obviously can modify your values in different ways, so pretty much up to you to keep an eye on those and check that everything is as it should. Now, one thing that I want to point out happens when you're adding color after the values is this one. My brush strokes of colors do not match the brush strokes of the values. They're completely disconnected. Now, when I'm painting directly with colors instead, everything is done in the same brush stroke, both color and value. And this affects, obviously, the look and feel of your painting quite a lot. It's something to keep in mind. Now, let's go on in adding color. Let's take some time to do some tests. So I quickly copy and paste my image a few times and I start trying different color combinations. Here I take into consideration the time of the day or the look and feel I want to give to my painting, like how fantasy it looks. I also try to think about the emotional impact that some color combination have on the final observer and, you know, like between cold, warm colors or maybe trying a complementary color combination. And once I was done, I ran a poll on my Instagram and people seemed to really like the second option, so I went for that one. So now I can finally start coloring on top of my values. Now, as you can see here, I'm leveraging my layer selections for all the edges that matters the most for readability. I'm also keeping an eye on my saturation as I don't want everything to be punchy. Now, you really have to be patient at this stage because everything is going to look pretty ugly for a while. Now, I'm also trying to give some variety of colors in the sky, in the foliage, and trying to avoid to place, you know, like just flat colors all around. I noticed everything was looking quite dark in the midground, so I slightly lighten up the values to reach some, some of the colors I wanted. Okay, so now that I have some base colors, what I need to add is some sunlight, because this scene is set up during the day. Here I have all my values and colors on separate layers, but I need everything flattened out, so I copied everything on a single layer. Now I want to duplicate the layer again and I go to the adjustment settings, curves. Here I want everything to go way brighter as if everything was hit by the sunlight. I also want to make everything warmer, so I go to my color balance settings and make everything going more towards yellow and red, both my highlights and my midtones. So now I end up having my base layer and my sunlight layer. And let's make another layer, this time empty between these two. Now let's click to my sunlight layer and let's make it a clipping mask. Now our result is that my sunlight layer is only visible when something is visible on the layer below. So we can actually paint the sunlight in. This way, my brush strokes and my image are separate and I can erase or add wherever and whenever I want without risking of losing my information. Now let's go back to the time lapse and see how it turns out. So I established first where my light source is and the light direction. And this gives me consistency and believability in the scene. Then, based on this, I paint all the planes hit by the light roughly at first to check how the image turns out and then I go in painting and erasing details. Now being the sunlight image separate, I can actually adjust its value later on and I end up making it even more brighter to have more contrast. The next necessary step to consider is the ambient light coming from the sky. This is something that always happens in open environments in sunny days. The blue light scattering from the sky hits all the planes in shadows that are exposed to it. So I'm going to paint some blue on the foliage, or on the open plains on the rocks, or for example on the open plains on my gate. This was done in part with the same technique of the sunlight, 
and where I didn't like the result, I just flatly painted over. Now I gotta say, the ambient light from the sky is something that I often exaggerate because I really like the colorful effect that gives me. And on my paintings, it's something that you would see very often, but it's something that really goes on personal, personal taste. Here I go on adjusting details here and there between shadows and light and honestly I wasn't that patient with this painting so it turned out to be quite rougher than it could be. A lot of times the final polishing stage of the painting can be very time consuming so many times when I reach a state with the image is quite readable I just, I'll just drop it. I mean, I personally don't dislike the rough look either but again I guess it goes to personal taste. Anyway, in the same way sunlight bounces off the sky, we got the same sunlight that bounces off the foliage and other planes and bounces back to other surfaces in shadow. And when light bounces back, it carries some colors, so to give realism to my scene, I had to consider bouncing light and painting it, for example, on some green coming from the foliage bouncing on the rocks or on my gate. Now everything else that remains is basically noodling and placing some details around ambient occlusion or highlights or small textures. For example, in the trunk and foreground or having a better texture on the foreground foliage in the shadow. And this is where I take my round brush at some very small size and patiently paint some details. And this can go as long as my patience lasts, as I said. Unfortunately, I didn't have much this time, so I guess it turned out okay anyway. Now one last thing before we wrap this up is some proper depth of field. And this can be obtained in the same way camera lenses do, blurring where it's not in focus. So what I do here is that I just copy the whole image and apply a Gaussian blur filter. Then I erase out from that everything that I want to keep in focus, so basically my middle ground where my subject is. Now my scene has a depth of field and it's suddenly more believable. And we're done! Finished! Now I hope I covered everything and hopefully this was useful, but if you have any question or doubt, please share them in a the comment below and I'll try to reply to everyone. Okay, so this is the part of the video where I'm supposed to say smash the like button because it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And consider subscribing! Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time!